So once again, here at Vajuga Enterprises, I seem to be dealing with a bit of technical issues, but that seems to happen every month or so, so I have to deal with it. Anyways, today we are here with Leaf talking about World of Darkness. Hello. Welcome, heroes and villains, to Fujuka Enterprises' YouTube channel. Take a moment, relax, stop your bickering, and just enjoy the show. World of Darkness has been out since at least the 90s, therefore it must have different versions to, of, for, of the game. Which version's the best to run? Oh, jeez. Uh, okay, so... Yeah, that's broken down. Essentially, there is World of Darkness and Chronicles of Darkness. Uh, so, World of Darkness uh, essentially has first edition, second edition, revised, and then they've done a 20th anniversary edition for uh, several of them. Uh, like, and really, the 20th anniversary editions were only because of Vampire LARPers. Like, like they were like they are a godsend to, to World of Darkness because, like the. Like it, the game would have been a dead game if it not it wouldn't have been for those vampire larpers. Um, so you know you know God's bless them. Um, but yeah, so they start out with a vampire twentieth anniversary, and then that went into werewolf, mage, wraith, and changeling. Uh, and then there's all and then with uh, crown of the darkness uh, that was essentially they ended the, in I think mid two thousands. They ended um, the world of the darkness, and then they kind of just like, like in a single year, just killed the line, and then started with their new world of darkness. Um, and then that, since then, they've you know done rebranding and you know company changes and you know things like that, and it's ended up with um, class world of darkness, new world of darkness, which got simplified into just world of darkness and chronicles of darkness. So those are the two main ones. And now with world of darkness, they branched off. They've continued into a fifth edition for vampires. Uh, and, um, Hunters, and now we're working one on one for Werewolves. Um, I'm not a particular fan of them because some of the horrendous mistakes they've made with 5th edition Vampire. Um, like, they've had some, they've had some issues. Um, but yeah, so for me, the one that I like to run the most is the 20th Anniversary, because that's essentially a combination of their first, second, revi and revised into, um, into one, one large book. Because they did it through Kickstarter, so it's a massive tome. It's it's you could literally you know drop it on someone's foot and possibly break the foot. It's it's a it's it's like when you talk about tomes, they're tomes. So that's the that's the, that's what I run. Whatever whatever system someone decides to mm -hmm. run is starting with vamp the vampire book the best one to start with. Okay, so it really depends on what kind of game style you want to run and what kind of game style you want to play in. Um. Vampires are really, um, they're, they're more approachable because really all they are is, is, um, an immortal society of humans, really. Um, like, really the only difference between, like, a human, human and a vampire in, like, most of the lores and stuff is that the, the vampires are immortal and they drink blood. Um, and really, you know, like, va like, vampires are just, like, you know, like, megalomaniacs, but so are humans, right? So, there's a level of easier approach to play vampires particularly because also vampires is a very social game uh the socialness is is very much baked into the system that that the baking system and has a very large focus on it it's like they have a thing called elysium which is literally just a vampire get together where you get a get together and like socialize and scheme and plan and plot and do all these other vampire dastardly things so um like with vampire it's definitely an easier um to get into because you know vampires are more popular um, everyone kind of knows a little bit more about vampires and because of the the way the vampire society in, in vampire the masquerade is built it's really just an immortal version of a lot of human societies so yeah i would say vampire is probably one of the easier ones to get into versus like werewolves at which point um you're not because with werewolf you're not human you may look human but you're not human you've never been human you're something else you're this this mystical um, hybrid between a human, a spirit, and a wolf. And that goes for any of the changing breeds. So you're, you've never been human, so it's, that's a little harder to you know, grasp. And like, even in like, the lore, because um, you know, in lore, werewolves come in essentially three breeds. They come in lupus, they come in hominid, and they came in, in, in Métis. 
Um, which so hominid essentially you're born to human parents, lupus you're born to wolf parents, and metis you're born to two werewolf parents. Um, so like the werewolf, so like werewolves have a have a culture that predates human civilization. Um, they have their own way of looking at things, and so that perspective sometimes is, is hard to work around. So they've actually even reflected that in the lore, in that a lot of hu- hominids have a hard time sh- transitioning their thought pattern from going from a human thought pattern to uh, a garu thought pattern so um so that and that kind of reflects like players issue too um raise the oblivion is pretty would pr- probably be pretty easy uh because you're literally just a ghost um and you have your own sort of issues but that's a co- probably as well as it's like the level of integration and ease to play is probably the same um as as vampire um but through it's never been as popular a game um I think mage, you think mage would be pretty easy because, you know, mage, hey, they're just humans. Um, except the way that magic work, it's 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 not like magic in D&D where he's like, hey, you have fireball, you have, you know, fly, you have um, invisibility, you have um, uh, blink, you have, which are spells that like have very much broken down a very hard magic, um, hard magic um, mechanic. Um, magic in, uh, in mage, the ascension, uh, is very much soft magic, so you like the spheres are very, very open ended, and they kind of they're just like here's like all of the things you can do with the sphere, and it's like a page and a half of just stuff. Um, so that ha- can lead to a lot of like option paral- paralysis to like you know like okay I can do this thing, but how do I do this thing? Should I do this thing? How you know and and so it that mechanic of essentially you know. That creative mechanic some, can sometimes cause issues. So, so, um, yeah, I'd say, yeah, yeah. So, you know, TDLR, um, yeah, vampire is probably one of the easier ones to get into World of Darkness with, for sure. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So, Dungeons and Dragons grew out of uh, of tabletop war war gaming so like you know things like you know um uh, in modern days you know things like war machine warhammer um uh suddenly those only two i believe but you know like the the tabletop war mentor stuff i guess yeah um there's the the tank one where you're in world war ii um but yeah so it's very much an outgrowth of that uh it's very much um i'd say like a hard mechanic in that it's everything is is well defined and in, in a box like you roll a bunch of you know dice Essentially, figure you roll a bunch of dice to figure out your stats. Um, all your classes are clearly marked out with with a, with a skill prog- with a skill progression. Uh, all the spells are clearly marked out. Combat is you know clearly marked out. You know, you can get into the nitty gritty of you know like how, whether or not the combat rules or you know the spell rules are you know balanced or if they work or whatever. But essentially, everything is very well marked out. Um, with with World of Darkness, um, you don't really roll anything to create your character. It's a point by system. Um, so it's you're given a bunch of points, and you can kind of put them wherever you want, um, depending on the depending upon the stage of character generation. So like you know you got your your attributes, which are split down into th- three sets. You got your physical, you got your mental, and you got your social, and you get so many points for that. And then you got your attributes, which are your talents, uh, your skills, and your knowledge. And you got so many points for that. And then you get and like they have their own limits depending you know upon because your character creation. You can't maybe you know have limits on how many points you can put in what. And then you get your, like, your willpower is derived from, you know, these stats. And then you have your power stat, which is for vampires, is your blood pool, which is, that based, on, which is based on your generation, right? So uh, it's a lot, like, the character gen is a lot softer. Um, and it's, it's, yeah, so it's a lot softer. And the rule mechanic is also a lot vaguer. Like, um, so it uses D10s instead of a D20 system. Uh, and really, you only ever really need one success. So like you're rolling one d10 for every point you have in that attribute and skill, at, attribute and ability, and you really only need one success. So like so like if you're running from like a rooftop to try to you know leap from that rooftop and land on that on that dr- that uh, train that's going by, you only need one success. It may be at a certain dif- difficulty you have to roll on that d10 and uh, every d10. So like put that at eight, right? So you have to roll a d8, or sorry, you have to roll one. D- you have to roll a group of d10 uh, with a difficulty number of eight. And as long as you get one eight in that group of D10s, you make it. That's And that's it, right? And any other success beyond that, you just make it more fancy. You're a little bit more successful at it, right? Um, so, and then, then when you get into, like, the rule mechanics of how, like, the powers work, um, there's some that are very, you know, like, set in stone. 
but a lot of it is very much up to interpretation of the storyteller and the players. Uh, it's it's and that really comes down to the fact that World of Darkness and Chronicle of Darkness's Darkness are both storytelling based games. So essentially, with D and D, a lot of it is the fate of the dice determine it. Uh, with storytelling games uh, like World like World of Darkness and Chronicles of Darkness, it's based on the idea that the story comes first. So, like the books really do encourage the storyteller, which is you know their version of the DM. Um, or GM, uh, that go ahead and fudge those dice if you need to, because, like, the story comes first. Um, so that really does influence the entire um, development of the of the rule mechanic and also the fluff and the lore or, you know, the splat or whatever you want to call that. Uh, so those are some of the differences. Like, I, and like So, like, there is, you do get experience in World Darkness and Chronicles of Darkness, but there is no, like... There's no level progression. It's like in D and D, you get level one, then you're you know you work up to level five and ten and then fifteen and twenty. Uh, in World Darkness and Chronicles of Darkness, there is no levels that you you can get point, you get experience points, and then you can invest those points into your abilities, into your attributes, into your powers, and you get better at those things. But you don't progress from like level one to level two to you know le- you know level ten and then up to level twenty. There is no level progression. It's just you get better at what you what you can do. And then you can branch out and learn more things, but there's so that that really does change like the way the mechanic of the game works and how you even play and interact with the rule system and 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 play your character. Hopefully that answers your question. So as a storytelling system, is World of Darkness? I'm just going to call it World of Darkness, but I'm referring to Chronicles of Darkness. Is World yeah. of Darkness? A crunchy system. It doesn't sound like it because it's a storytelling system, but I just want to know for clarity. Okay, so it 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 depends. It depends on which group, which like if Mage is a lot more crunchy, um, just because you have they they have additional mechanics uh, that make it a little bit more crunchy. Uh, but overall, I wouldn't call it a crunchy game. Um, it's it's pretty simple. Like really, it's it break like the actual mechanic really just breaks down to. Um, a number of d10s equal to your uh, attribute plus your ability, and then all your bo- abilities and powers really just modify something you can do or give you an, a, a basic ability like um that are based on on your your, your dice pool um a lot of the times and or they just augment you somehow. So um yeah, I wouldn't call it I wouldn't call either one of them really crunchy. There 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 are some sub games that are a little bit more crunchier than others. Um but yeah, no, I wouldn't call them crunchy. I'm aware that you've done this, so how hard is it to combine the settings of World of Darkness? Um, so, okay, so that is one reason why I do like 20th Anniversary, because at that point, uh, there had been enough storytellers, um, that, you know, had, and had mentioned to the, you know, to the designers of the game that they'd had essentially what I call a mixed bag of nuts. Um, because all my players are nuts, and um, and it's just a mixed bag. Because it's like, hey, I want to play this, I want to play this, I want to play this. Well, you know, okay, cool. It's a big mixed bag of nuts. Um, so twentieth anniversary edition is a lot easier. Uh, essentially, with, with with the big thing that makes it hard sometimes to mix the groups is is the magic systems in each sy- is subsystem, right? Um, so what twentieth anniversary did essentially is all magic is the same because it's the end result. It's just applied differently. Um, I ended up using something fairly similar before I was uh, running 20th Anniversary. Uh, back in, I think, oh geez, before, yeah, even before they came out with that 20th Anniversary. I'd, essentially, I had that every magic system was different, but the end result was the same. So because of that, uh, it was, which is fairly similar to what they end up doing, it just, they even went even simpler. Um, but it was, it was definitely challenging at times, because mechanically wise, um, in combat, if you're a, mem- a guru or one of the me- changing breeds, um, you're gonna re- you're gonna wreck shit. It's 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 like I remember. Okay, so they they there's there's this thing of uh, the trope of the vampires being um, the apex predator, uh, and if that's that's true. And if and then what about werewolves and other cha- you know changing breeds? Well, they're WMDs. Um, <laughs> it is it is entirely possible. Um, for you to do things 
incredibly destructive with um, in combat with with a uh, with a changing breed. But at the same time, same token, um, you get a shotgun blast, you know, point blank to the face, and that's going to mess up even a werewolf's day. Um, because shotguns are like one of the king weapons in World of Darkness. They 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 are a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful weapon um, that can really take down you know um, Munchkin players or you know players that are getting a little out of hand. Um, you know, kind of teach them some of the vulnerabilities that you know. Yeah, no, your character can still die. Um, anyways, but um, vampires, uh, their power is a lot more subtle. So, and like some of them are very combat, but you know, comparatively, um, shape changers, you know, or top dog when it comes to combat. Um, and then mages are just like a weird wild card because of everything they can do. Um, vampires are very much, um, like I said, the apex predator. So they they can tear through, you know, humans. They can they can do some significant damage to werewolves. Um, and um, and mages and uh, changelings it's just it's yeah it's, it's just they're very they're more well-rounded really compared to the to the others uh and then changelings are a little bit of an odd duck uh that can you know um that looks like like an odd duck or you know like an ugly duckling and then and then suddenly you know they can hit like a mac truck um but yeah so there's it, so there's definitely some issues with mixing it up mixing them all together and um like when it comes to non-combat situations, um, vampires are vampires and mages are very much peak. Like when it comes to like uh, any social interaction or uh, within with either within another faction or within that faction or you know like that proverbial you know um, you've been through a gunfight and you you manage to get away in a car and the car's you know been shot up a little and some cops pull you over. Um, vampires and mages can very easily handle that situation in a lot more subtle manner than. Um, than a werewolf could, um, and even changelings can do pretty good in that in those situations too. So um, there's definitely some issues of figuring how how to balance that, and then also sometimes some of their sub mechanics sometimes conflicted in weird ways. Um, but yeah, so but yeah, no, they cleared up that pretty much in 20th anniversary. They they made it a lot easier by that point to actually run a mixed game in world in world world of darkness. Um, I'm not sure about Chronicles of Darkness because I don't really. I don't really run those games, um, but I know in World of Darkness, by 20th anniversary, it's a lot easier to run that mixed bag of nuts. I know that you have played in World of Darkness games. Any moments from being a player that you would like to discuss at this time? Not, not really. Um, well, I did, I did, I did, I, I, so I haven't played a lot. I've mainly been like that forever DM, um. So I haven't had a lot of chance to play in World of Darkness, but one of the times I did, I ended up making a Nosferatu vampire. No, not Nosferatu. Machia Machiavellian uh, vampire, and I'm probably still not even. I'm probably butchering that. Um, but they get a ability where essentially their so, their their client is so insane that they can see the future. Um, they can predict things like literally, you know, the flap of the butterfly wings, and they suddenly they know where their that hurricane's going to be. Um, so I ended up using that ability to kind of break the storyteller to the point where he didn't know how to proceed to make the game. Um, lucky for us, um, uh, f uh, fate and life uh, kind of, you know, interceded, and he didn't have to worry about that because life gone the way and we ended up having to cancel that game. Um, <laughs> otherwise, uh, I, I essentially, by use of, of that particular vampire discipline, I had painted him into a corner and he had no idea how to extricate himself, extricate himself from that, that corner I had uh, painted him in. Um, so that's fairly memorable. Um, so that's always, that's, yeah, uh, that's about, mm, that's pretty much the, about the best memory I can think, yeah. Because like I said, I haven't had a big chance, to, a lot of chance to play. On the opposite side of that, any moments of running a game that you would like to talk about? So you gave me this question, th you know, this list of questions a, a few weeks back, and I've been, th I've been thinking these last weeks and going like, oh god, there are just so fucking many. Uh, sorry, sorry, I left, I left an F, F bomb there, slip. Um, there are just there. There's like the highway of horror, highway of horror. Um, there's the, the the desert of terror that lead that led to the desert of doom. There's there's shit pie. Um, there's there's cold acid. Um, there there's you know there's Freddy at the gates of heaven. Um. There, there are just so many. I don't, and I don't know where to start. Um, because like almost to do these stories justice, some of these other people involved would have to be there. Uh, but in short, 
uh, Freddy the Gates of Heaven. Uh, that was one of our players who was playing a hunter of the imbued uh, who had died. Uh, his character, and he moved on to another character, and then the party ended up um, through their own shenanigans, essentially in heaven, and they weren't allowed to leave. So Freddy, being because also the character, the player based the character on Freddy from Scooby Doo. The whole thing is background. There was there was Scooby uh, and Shaggy. Well, Scooby was a totem spirit animal to Shaggy, who was a who was like a who was a mage. Um, Velma and um, crud. Uh, uh, what's the cheer, the cheerleader? Velma and um, Daffy, uh, Daff Daphne. They were I think they were a pair, they were a pair of lesbian um, mages as well. And he was just like this, you know, this um. This gun crazy, you know, you know, blonde, um, um, himbo, Freddy. Um, but yeah, so they couldn't get out. So Freddy decides, okay, um, I'm I'm going to uh, blast open the gates of heaven so my friends can get out of heaven so they can continue to save the world. Um, yeah, there's uh, again also the same same that same player. Uh, there was the the alley the alleyway of of uh, uh, visions, uh, where essentially uh, he was playing a demon, the fallen character, which is literally a demon. Like, one of the fallen angels, you know, the rebel angels against God, uh, they went out, they were essentially, they lost, they were punished, they went to abyss, they later, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of years later, they, they managed to escape because of, you know, the, the Avatar storm in the, in the spirit worlds. But anyways, and they come back, they possess, you know, dead bodies. Um, but anyway, so he transformed into a apoptoglyptic form in this alleyway where a group of homeless bums saw him. And it's like, well, I can't leave witnesses. And I described how these bums were, like, totally thinking they were hallucinating on the drugs and amount of alcohol they were having. So his, okay, I still can't have witnesses, so he ate the bums. Thus, um, overdosing on several, you know, um, hallucinogenic drugs. Uh, and then he proceeded to, in the same fight, throw, um, um, uh, uh, the, the, the center of, you know, like, the actual big chunk of, a, of an engine. At, an, at another player, and then he also grew wings in another part, point in that, that fight, and then took off to the sky in Mach 1 or something like that, and uh, caused collateral damage. And then there's the highway, like I said, the highway of terror, and then, you know, the desert of, uh, uh, the highway of horror, the de desert of ter terror, the desert of doom, they're two linked things, but yeah, so there have been some moments, um, yeah. And a lot of it just, a lot of it is really a series of chaining events like a player does this and then another player does this to counter it and another player does this to counter it and none of it helps it just adds to this chain of w why are you burning down the world kind of it's just this this, this like snowball effect and and because i've noticed at a certain point because i've seen again in all these games i've played or run that they once you hit that snowball effect it's just going to keep going until it goes splat Any advice for players new to the ses settings? Um, yeah, don't don't be shy. Like, um, like I because I know there's 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 the there's a habit of a new player that's like brand new to the game or you know brand brand new to a group. Um, to be kind of shy and laid back a little, just don't just go for it. Like if you're playing a vampire. Play like a vampire, like it, like play like your most melodramatic, um, high school, you know, self you can. Like if you were if you were a drama geek during high school, be the most drama geek you absolutely can for that vampire. Um, if you weren't a drama geek during during high school, but if you knew some, be one of them. You know, just don't be shy. You know, um, yeah, yeah, don't be shy. Don't, um. Don't like you know try to second guess yourself. Just just go with it and always remember it. We're doing this. We're doing this essentially for fun. Um. So yeah. So just have fun with it. I know. I and I I, I know I'm, that that's kind of you know hard because you know sometimes you know social pressures and you know and like but you know yeah just just have just have fun with it. On the flip side of that, any advice for people? that are new to gaming that new storytellers um 
Yeah, don't don't play a Binks Bang and Nuts for your first game. Um, that that's my big event. Get your players to actually figure out are we going to do a vampire game, a werewolf game, a mage game, a change the game, a wraith game, whatever. Get them to play the same faction. Um, don't do a mixed bag of nuts because that's just it's a mixed bag of nuts. Um, so yeah, just uh, and then like initially focus in on what you're going to do. Like, what's the plot of the story? What's the theme of the story? And then from there, just slowly build an ad. And again, also your storyteller. Don't be if don't be afraid to like you know um, ignore your dice rolls and go with whatever works makes the story work best. Anyone or anything you would like to shout out at this time? Yeah, to all my mix, uh, my former and current mixed bag of nut players. I I know where all you I know where y'all live, so don't for ever forget that I know where y'all live. I know that may say mildly threatening, but you know, I know where y'all live. Find you. Find you. Yeah, no, that's it. Yeah. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Check out, check out the description of this video. It has the links to all, all, a lot of my other socials, including my Discord. And we'll see you in the next video. Have a good one, y'all.